Hi guys, hello and welcome to another C Sharp programming tutorial. Today I will solve this assignment for you so that uh, if you are struggling in solving this assignment or if you have any questions or if you want to see an alternate solution to solving the problem you have a place to go and look at it. This or something very similar to this may also be assigned by other schools and could help other people as well but anyway in this assignment, I ask you to write a program and I want you to write the solution in a form-based as well as console-based application so that you can see how you can take your pseudocode and implement in both areas. The idea is that you accept the hourly rate and hours worked from user and then you check to see it's an if condition problem that if the user has worked less than or equal to 40 hours, then the gross pay will simply be hours work time the hourly rate. Otherwise, if a user has worked for more than 40 hours, then for the first 40 hours, the gross pay will be gross pay for the first 40 hours is the hours work time the hourly rate and for the remaining hours over 40 it will going to be calculated with times and a half so here i've given you the formula to calculate the overtime which is the difference of 40 and the total those are the remaining hours times the times and a half now different people may solve it differently I will going to give you a pseudocode here and then we're going to be uh, looking at the code here. Uh, so to get started, the first thing I need in my pseudocode is to declare variables. I need to declare variable to calculate um, gross pay. I need variable to store hours work and hourly rates so and I need at least three variables. So I am declaring in some cases people prefer to use uppercase for uh, the keywords in pseudocode. Anyway, we have a declare statement in which I have my variables which are gross pay, hourly rate, and hours worked. Then I need to take from user the input for hourly rate and hours worked. So I'm going to display a message enter hourly rate and read hourly rate. I'll copy this and paste this for hours worked and we'll accept hours worked. Now I need to figure out how many hours the user has actually worked. So if hours worked is less than or equals to 40 then, okay, this is again pseudocode, so I could use certain words that you may not translate in your actual program. So if that is the case, then the gross pay is calculated as hours worked, and I'm using the same formula that I gave you right here, okay, times hourly rate. Otherwise is written as else, okay, and then I need to take a different approach, which would be to calculate the gross pay the same way. However, uh, it will gonna be instead of uh, saying 40, it should be actually the gross pay for the first 40 hours should be 40 and not hours worth. So, so 40 hours because they're solid. You have worked 40 hours for sure. Okay. And then you need overtime. For that, you probably will need another variable called overtime. So your overtime is equals to, so I declared an overtime in the declaration. Now I'm writing overtime is the remaining hours, which is hours worked minus 40 times multiplied by hourly rate times times and a half end now in this case my gross pay should actually be the sum of gross pay and overtime so that's why I will write gross pay equals to gross pay plus overtime 
Now, some of you may want to combine these two lines perfectly fine or combine all three lines perfectly fine. And then towards the end, I'm just breaking it down for those people who want to see it in a breakdown form. And those people who, who are okay with uh, writing condensed expressions, they can then condense these lines. And I'll show you both of those approaches when I start to write the actual program in the C-sharp. And then outside, I can then display the gross pay. Okay, so my program is supposed to then display the gross pay. So this is basically the pseudocode for my program. Now let's take this idea and implement in C sharp. So now I am in a C sharp application where first of all I need to declare these variables. I need a variable for gross pay. I need a variable for overtime. I need a variable for hourly rate and I need a variable for hours worked. Always a good idea to initialize your variables with some initial values even though they always gets initialized to value of zero, but it's a good programming practice to do that. Now I need to tell my user that I need them to enter something. So enter hours worked. And I need to convert the input, which is in a string, to equal and double amount. And then I can copy this and paste it over hourly rate. Both inputs are in. Once the inputs are in, now I'm going to write my if condition. If hours worked is less than equals to 40. I can use curly braces or not use curly braces up to me perfectly. Fine. Uh, gross pay is hours worked times the hourly rate. Otherwise, gross pay is first 40 hours times hourly rate then overtime equals the remaining hours times times and a half of hourly rate and then I can combine both gross space the previous value computed on line 31 with the overtime that I'm calculating on line number 32 and then I can display the program logic gross pay and that is gross pay and I can convert it to a currency format just like that and all of this stuff I taught you in class before so now when I run this program it will ask for an input for me to enter the hours worked so if I enter, let's say, 40, and the hourly rate is 10, then it should be a simple 400. Now, let's try to enter 41 hours. In that case, for the first 40 hours, it should be at $10 an hour, 400. And for the remaining one hour, it should be times and a half, which is 15. So that's why it's 415. So we have seen that our program works just fine. Now, if you want your logic to be shortened, you can certainly combine everything right here like this. Okay, I know this will be a little bit of a longer instruction that you have your hours, hourly rate for the first 40 hours, and to that you're adding the remaining hours times times and a half. And then you can simply write it all in one instruction as opposed to writing it in two instructions. Some of you may take the approach of instead of storing the output in gross pay, directly display it 
directly display it right put your right line statement right here with the message and directly display it curly braces are not required because we only have one instruction in the else you can condense your code as much as possible. I don't even need the overtime variable anymore because I simply uh, threw that logic out. So different ways of doing the same program. Whatever approach you want to take, you can take. Okay? Now, let's take this idea and implement it in the form-based solution. So I'm going to copy this code so that I don't have to write everything over again. However, some of this code will disappear when I write the form-based solution because I will be accepting my inputs in text boxes and I'll have labels and I'll display my output on the screen with a label and a text box. So things will be slightly different. Okay. So let me start our next, my next project, C Sharp. It will be a Windows Forms app. This is my assignment number four. And I will have a form on which I'll do my setup here. So I will bring in three labels, one, two, three. And I'll bring in, after I put these labels in the respective places, I'm going to bring in one button, which will be my processing button. And I'll bring in three text boxes. So I'll have a text box for in front of my label one, a text box in front of my label two, and a text box in front of my label three. And as you have already learned, you can always select all of them by hitting Control A, click in the form, hit Control A, all of them get selected. And then in the properties, you can increase the font size to the size that is more readable, okay? And then you can just change the text properties and stuff like that. I'm going to be walking you through that process again. Uh, so let me first of all move my text boxes a little out of the way and scroll down to the text property for the label one. And I can type here, hours worked. Hourly rate my button to say calculate our uh, gross pay and then in my label three I can display the gross pay okay Then I can uh, change the property of my last item to read only so that it is only used for output. And now let me rename my text boxes. So the first text box I have, let me scroll up to the naming property. I would like to call this one TEXT text hours. The second one, TEXT text rate. And the last one, TEXT pay, P A Y pay. So the first one, text hours, which is in uh, next to hours worked. The second one is text rate. And the last one is text pay. Now let's double click on the button so that we can write the code in the button. So I'll just paste what I copied from the other example. Now my write instructions are not needed anymore. All I need to do is instead of uh, getting the input from the read line, I will type text since this is hours worked, right? So this will be my text hours dot text. So I can pull the text from the text box, convert it to the double type and store it in the variable. Exactly the same thing I'll do here for my hourly rate. It will be text rate dot text property. And this will put that everything in place. I'm 
calculating things in gross pay, this middle logic will stay exactly the same. The formula and everything will gonna stay exactly the same. The only difference now will be in the output. Instead of throwing the output to the console, and I do not need this gross pay anymore as well, because I will, I'm already saying that in my label. So I will rather say here, text gross, oh sorry, text pay dot text equals to gross pay dot to string and convert that to the currency format. So as you notice that once I wrote my console application with minimal, very minimal changes, I can actually run my, I mean like complete my form-based application. Now let me run this program. And when I run it, you will see a form popping up here, right? Okay, so hours work. So I've let 40 hours at the rate of $10 per hour, so 400. And I'm gonna change this to 41, and this is 415. If I do, let's say, 10.55, you can say you can see that it does you know decimals and everything for me so anyway hope you would have enjoyed this tutorial and it would have helped you in doing your assignment as well or if you're not here for an assignment and are here only to see how uh, if conditions are or how to solve this problem in particular then either way you know i hope it's helpful let me know if you have any questions till then take care guys bye bye